everyone good evening welcome to six seventh and eighth channel of byju's i'm your teacher ankita and i welcome you all in today's class especially for the class six graders because we will be finishing off the complete biology revision so i hope that all of you are ready for the revision of biology good evening everyone good evening i hope that all of you can see me and can hear me clearly do let me know in the comment section Yes, but your class, uh, Sham, we already had it right in the upcoming week. We'll have the uh, mentee quizzes also. Yes, Manat. Good evening. Good evening, Himanshu. Good evening, Anshika. Yes, good evening, Meghna. My channel, Arpita, Manat, Gunjan, Aisha, Himanshu, Kundan. Okay, Akul, Sakshi, Seva, Masti, Jia. Taksh, Aradhna, we. Good evening, everyone. How are you all? And how's the Josh? Everyone, please make sure you stay with us till the end because we'll be finishing off whole biology, right? And of course, for Mahabir, we have some questions also. It's not a menti quiz, but we have some questions, so we can definitely, uh, you know, discuss those questions. So I hope that everyone, all of you, are ready. Yes. Good evening, everyone. So good to see that so many of you are here. Everyone, please make sure you hit the like button for the video and do share this video with your friends. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I hope that all of you are in a great health. And I think uh, for classic for me for very first time. So happy New Year. We met uh, last week also, but yeah, just recalling everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes. So let's quickly move ahead, everyone. Without taking much of your time, we have four important chapters that we'll be covering, and I hope that all of you are have your textbook, your notebook, your pen or pencil, so that you can note down the important topics that we'll be discussing or any important information that you feel uh, is uh, you know great for your examination. Please make sure you note it down. Yes, Charlie. So everyone, give me a quick thumbs up. Can we start? Can we start the class? Give me a quick thumbs up, everyone. Right. Meanwhile, I'm just waiting for you. And let me tell you about the Byju's Power Prep Week. This is for the uh, grade eighth, right? Not for uh, sixth and not for seventh, but for eighth grader. So if you are in eighth grade and if you have a sibling, you can definitely tell them about this, right? We will be having the live interaction classes, and of course, we'll be focusing on the important question that can come in the examination, the way to write the answers in the examination, and so much more. So tell your friends, tell your siblings, write about this course. The link is in the description box. Go there, click on it, and it is very easy and very much sorted, right? So tr do try it out, everyone. All of us will be there. All the teachers will be teaching you live, right? And you will will be able to interact in a more closed uh, classroom way. Awesome, Charlie. So everyone, in this particular chapter, if we talk about right, uh, in this particular grade, if we talk about class six biology, we have. Uh, Total, of course, initially we had six chapters, but of course we saw uh, various deletion happening, and so now we are left with components of food, getting to know plants, body movement, and living organism characteristics, and the habitat. So, everyone, are you ready? Creative Rupa. Next week we'll have it for class eighth. Now you can stop spamming. Okay, Chali. Okay, everyone. Yes, uh, Salma for class seventh ka bache ho gaya. We have already had this ma uh, marathon class for class seventh. Also, we we are doing for class sixth. Next week we'll have it for class eighth. Chaliye. So everyone, uh, we are starting with the chapter number one. That is the components of food. So what is the you know pattern that we'll be following? We'll be looking at the mind map first. A quick recap, and then we have two to two to three questions. So I want all of you. To be here with us till the end, and please do pay attention. Charlie, first thing, everyone, component of the food. Now it's a very very easy chapter, right? It talks about the different components that we have in our food, and when we talk about the components of food, we always talk about the carbohydrates, fats, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Now these are the five important components of the food. Along with that, nowadays we add water and fiber also into it, which is equally important. Clear. So, if someone will ask you what are the uh, components of food, here we have we have the carbohydrates and lipids, the fats, right? That gives us the energy, right? That help us in providing the energy. Then we have body building. Kiliye, what we have? We have protein and 
the vitamins and minerals plays a very very important role in providing the protection to the body right and of course if there's a deficiency of vitamins we know that a uh, individual can suffer from various deficiency so this is very important everyone now if you talk about a very important term if i ask you okay um you should eat only one day carbohydrate right is it a way that we can eat one day is for carbohydrate one day is for fats or one day is for the proteins do you think that it works well with our body tell me yusha you can leave the class bachche we don't have many today requesting you to leave the class please do not spam we don't have menti if you want menti you can leave the class no issues nice very good welcome to the first class uh chali no right what we need we need a we need to have all the components of everything right we need the components of food right and a equal quantity what we call it as what we call it as everyone we call it as the balanced diet right so a balanced diet will have all the different components of the food in a right apt quantity so that they can provide the nutrient that are required for the body balanced diet is a very important question i'm sure aap logo ne dekha hoga you may get the balanced diet pe a uh, question so what is a balanced diet a diet that contain different kinds of food right uh, in, in quantity in certain quantity and certain portion that are requirement for the calories like protein minerals vitamin etc that are really important for the nutrition for our body clear everyone are we clear easy peasy okay thank you neeraj yes very good so after that if i ask you we have spoken about that vitamins and minerals if there is a deficiency of these the individual will, will be suffering from a deficiency disease so let's talk about it so that that diseases that are caused due to the lack of the nutrient right over a long period of time we call it as the deficiency diseases now everyone i will move aside take a screenshot everyone take a screenshot of this everyone we will be uh, i will be explaining you all of this we will be quickly recapping yes chali right uh, here we go so carbohydrates what are the important source of the food carbohydrate we have rice bread potato then of course if you talk about the function it provides a instant energy now if there is a deficiency of the carbohydrates weak body deficiency dry skin then protein may milk egg paneer fish all of that will come pulses will come into the protein they are responsible for the building of the body and repairing of the body if there is a deficiency we will see stunted growth decoloration of the hairs and diarrhea lipids may we have peanut butter right yummy yummy food that we have it actually help right it actually help in energy reservoir right it stores and that's how it provides us the energy later when we needed right then we have vitamin a now of course everyone now you tell me vitamin a if there is a deficiency of vitamin a in the in individual which disease which deficiency disease a individual will be suffering from yes i will take your doubts give me a minute but everyone please stay focused krish i am not sure what you are asking bache yes uh zed we already had a class uh, we had a class last week for class 7th this week we'll have another subject okay very good then the correct answer is night blindness right we know that if there is a deficiency of vitamin a right the individual will be suffering from the night blindness very very good so we know that vitamin a is very very crucial for our eyes then we have vitamin b1 it is present in the brown rice peas help the cells to change the carbohydrate into energy and the disease which is caused by the deficiency of uh, vitamin b1 is the berry berry right we have the disease which is the berry berry okay now we have vitamin c and vitamin d vitamin c causes a if there is a deficiency of vitamin c a individual will have scurvy right and vitamin d deficiency will cause a disease called as rickett vitamin e and vitamin k are important things they have given but you don't you don't have to go into the details of it right chal then everyone you can take a screenshot of this and I, after that i will be answering your doubts 
Yes, very good. Everyone take a screenshot of this. Very good, very good. How much that? I'll answer your question, but I will answer your question. Give me a minute, I'll answer that question. Now, everyone, calcium, I'm sure. I'm sure you had heard about, you know, your parents telling you, you should be drinking milk, right? It gives you the calcium and you'll be growing stronger. So, of course, if there's a deficiency of calcium right in the body, of course, we'll see the tooth decay. And it's very important for overall health of the individuals. If there's a, de if there's a deficiency of iron, of course, we'll see the uh, deficiency disease, which is the anemia, right? Uh, we know that RBCs carries the oxygen. And uh, in this particular disease, right, the amount of RBCs will reduce and of course the shape also will change. So, uh, say shape is definitely something that we will be learning in a higher class, but it's very important. Water, iodine and dietary fiber. Now, iodine everyone, they have mentioned in your textbook about the goiter. Right, if there's, a, if there's a deficiency of iodine in the body, the individual might get a disease which is the goiter, that is swelling of the thyroid gland. Right everyone, very, very good. RBCs are the red blood cells. Yes, RBCs are the red blood cells. Yes, Krish. Okay, you are talking about the roughage. Yeah, I think Manat was also was asking about the roughage. So, let me quickly answer everyone. What is roughage? Right, what is roughage? Roughage is nothing but a food, right? That actually have more of fiber. Have more of fiber. Fruits like I'm sure you would have heard about your parents telling you we should be consuming fiber. Sweet potato may we have, right? We have in oats, right? The, so the, these fibers, right? These are not very nutrient. They will not be providing the nutrition to the body, but they are very good for the digestion process and cleaning out the small intestine. Clear? And large intestine altogether. Not cleaning, cleaning per se, kaise scrub nahi ho raha but this roughage, right, takes the unwanted, undigestive food. And it actually help in clearing out our digestive elementary canal. The low, the, basically the large intestine. Yes? Vitamin B, ka, we can see meat, fish, egg, avinash. Clear everyone? Oats are a good example, right? Good, good, very good. Yes, Aisha and I think Shreya is asking, right? Uh, sorry, Sakshi is asking, how is Ashera, ma'am? Ma'am is doing good. Ma'am is recovering. Hopefully, ma'am will be able to come back soon. Yes, Charlie. Everyone, if you have any doubt, please ask me. If not, we'll move to the questions. The food in our stomach which have, no, that is not called as roughage, bache. Neeraj, we don't call that as a roughage. Right? Okay. Yes, Charlie. Water. Water and roughage are very, very important. Insulation, I'll, I'll tell you. So, what is insulation? I'm sure you would have seen um, polar bear, right? Now, if you talk about the humans only, see if this is a skin. And if, if we have this organ, right, between this, we will have a layer of fat. Now, this is a layer of fat. Now, when this fat burns, right, we get the energy out of it. Now, this fat, as is an insulator, after the insul insulator means it will not allow the heat to pass through it. Hence, in the polar bear, that's a very common example we all study, that in the polar bear, especially, right, when we talk about, they have a, they have this fat layer deposition, that is the reason they can actually keep themselves warm during the harsh winter times also. So, everyone, are we clear? Yes. Okay. Clear, everyone? Are we clear with this? Take a screenshot, everyone. Uh, yes, very good, very good, everyone. Yes. We can say oats, vegetables, right? All of that thing that actually help in... Uh, cleansing or help in clearing out the undigested uh, food, right? Uh, very, very crucial for that. Ma'am, what does iron provide? Iron provides what? Matlab, iron provides what in the sense? Iron provides 
ह्यूज अमाउंट राइट ह्यूमोग्लोबिन वेन वी से अच्छा ह्यूमोग्लोबिन कम हो गया तो डॉक्टर विल बी गिविंग यू दी आयरन टैबलेट्स ओके चलिए यस मैम डस बनाना है वाइटमिन अविनाश डेफिनेटली इट हैव नॉट दैट बट स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ इट नॉट एक्चुअली I'm not sure about whether the banana has vitamins or not. It's an interesting question. Yes, I'm not sure. I will find it and and I will let you know. But the banana have the uh, vitamin. Chali. Okay. Yes, everyone. Chali. Now we are done with the first chapter. I hope that all of you have an understanding about this. Let's take everyone a very quick look at the questions. So I hope that all of you are ready. first question the essence the essential components of food of our food are called as what fats nutrient minerals or roughage the important the essential nutrient that we really we really really need right the essential components of a food are called as what we are at the first topic arts we are at the first chapter right very good everyone the correct answer over here is nutrient very very good very very good Yes, very good, everyone. We know that the essential component of a food is uh, are called as a nutrient, and, and it includes carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Very good. Yes, Charlie. Now moving to the question number two. Dash provides more than double the energy provided by the carbohydrates or protein in the human body. So, along with the protein and the carbohydrates, we have one more important source that gives us the energy, right? If it burns, it gives us the energy. What is the answer? A. Fats. B. Vitamins. C. Minerals. And D. Starch. Think about it, everyone. Think about it. It's a very easy question. चलिए वेरी गुड नीरज आई नॉट बी एबल टू कंडक्ट द पोल्स राइट आर नॉट एबल आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू कंडक्ट द पोल्स एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू विद दिस वेरी गुड एवरीवन द करेक्ट आंसर ओवर हियर इज फैट्स राइट वी नो दैट फैट्स आर द वन इफ दे बर्न राइट दे विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग अस द एनर्जी सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन ओवर हियर इज ऑप्शन नंबर ए दैट इज फैट्स वेरी गुड एवरीवन मूविंग टू द क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 रिकेट्स इज कॉज्ड बाय द डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ इट्स अ वेरी वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन एवरीवन Manak, please ask your doubt. Very good, very good. Yes, Avinash. Very good, Puno. Yes, T series, Avinash. Yes, Krish. Okay, Shreyanshi, Vinu Priya, Salma, Prashanta, Sohil, Krishi, Krish, Sam, Sakshi, Manoj, Neeraj, Aisha, Gulmohar, Krish. It's the same thing, but it's roughage and dietary fiber. Good, everyone. The correct answer over here is option number D. Vitamin D, easy peasy. So with this, everyone, we are done with the very first chapter that we have. Now let me ask you, everyone, how's your confidence level? So if we have five star, how many stars you will give yourself? Tell me, how many stars you will give yourself? For this particular chapter, the components of food. It's a very easy chapter, everyone. It's a very very easy chapter. Nice, five out of five on fire, all of you. Amazing. Four point five, okay. Three point five, four, four point five. Very good, very good. Love the confidence, everyone, that you all have. So we are done with the very first chapter, that is the components of food, and now we are moving to the next chapter, which is getting to know plants. Right? It's a very easy chapter. and let's see if we can quickly recap this chapter so here we go everyone about the plants now when we talk about the plants right we can clearly differentiate them or we can classify them into different different types i'm sure in in the nature you would have seen different types of plants altogether some plants are really very tall and some plants are very short some plants have fruits some plants don't have some actually crawl some actually climb right and some of these uh, have a very huge uh, you know huge stem and some of the plants have a uh, very good medicinal properties they are very light very chotu 
Yes. So what are we talking, everyone? We are talking about the different types of plants that we have. So in that we have herbs, we have shrubs, trees, climbers, and the creepers. So we'll be focusing on each one of them, everyone. I want you to stay focused in the class, starting with the herbs. Now you tell me what type of plants we have in the category of herbs. Very good, very good. We know that. Manat, we can say oats. Oats has a little bit of dietary fiber, not the cereals, right? Not the other cereals. Okay? Oats is still considered at some time. Okay, very good, very good. So, herbs, herbs we will remember that they are very small plants, very, very small plant, right? Non-woody and tender stem. The stem is very tender, it's non-woody, it's green in color, it's very soft, right? The stem is mostly green in color and of course we have the example of coriander, dhania and mint okay so remember these three points about it everyone in your examination if they ask you to write about the herbs these three points are well sufficient right so please take a note of it i will move aside and i'll ask you to take the screenshot also of all of it now then we have shrubs now shrubs have a little bit more size as compared to the herbs right uh, they have a hard but moderately thick and sometimes a woody stem also. The stem develops branches near the bases, right? And we have the example like lemon, rose, oranges and peach over here. Lemon and rose are even a good example for all of us to remember about the shrubs. Yes? Then we have trees. Big, big trees everyone, right? Then we have trees. Very good everyone, you can take a screenshot or probably later may also you can uh, take a screenshot. Yes. Very good. Charlie, okay. So they are very tall trees, definitely have a huge, very thick stem. Bears a lot of leaves, very uh, woody structure, right? So here we have the example, mango, jackfruit, coconut. Then we have climbers, everyone. Now climbers have weak stem and they spread on the ground, right? And of course, they'll, then they'll move ahead. Yes. And uh, we have the example uh, over here, watermelon, strawberry and pumpkin. Then we have creepers who will be, right? Uh, basically, actually, uh, there's a small change over here. Right, this is over here. Creepers, may know, we will see that they are the one that actually is, are, are on the ground. Okay, so this is not the clear everyone. Yes, everyone, now I will request all of you to take a screenshot. Jaldi, everyone, take a screenshot. Yes, there's a switch everyone, right, I was, I was mentioning this information is for the creepers and this for the climbers. Okay, Charlie everyone, take a screenshot now. Aquatic plants, Kavinash, we have water lily, lotus, right, then we have hydrilla, water hyacinth. Chali, very good. Chali. It's a climber. It's a climber. Okay? Chali, everyone. Now, moving to the next important part, everyone. Very good. Done, 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 done. Yes, Prashanta, I have just explained that, Bache. Chali. Now, we'll be talking about the different parts of the plant. And that includes stem, roots, leaves flowers and the seeds. So we are starting with the stem. Now I'm sure all of you have seen a tree, right? And of course, if you look at a very big tree, right? What we have, right? What we have, we have the huge stem, right? What is the important role of the stem? Of course, it, it bears the uh, leaves, fruits, branches, right? And of course, it actually help in pulling the water. Well, very, very interesting. Leaves play that important role. But yeah, stem actually help in carrying the water to the leaves. So that's an important function of the uh, stems. 
Then of course we have different types of roots. Now we have two main root system that we have studied. We have tap root system and then we have fibrous root system. Tap root system and there is only one main root right. See over here this main root is there and from here we will see that other roots are arising. We can see over here right. Abhinash have explained you the examples. Please don't spam again and again. Right. I just told you the examples of it. Okay. Yes, chali. So we have the tap root and we have the fibrous root. Fibrous roots are what we have. We don't have a main root, right? There's a arise of the roots from one particular part only. See over here at the base of the stem, right? We'll see the various roots coming out of it. Usually, tap roots are found in the dicot um, in the dicot plants, right? And of course, fibrous roots are found in the monocots. Right, everyone, and we'll be learning more further about the venation also. Yes, parallel venation and reticulate venation. Absolutely correct. Very good, very good. Then, if you talk about it, the roots provides a very important role, right, in the anchorage of the plants, help in preventing the uh, loss of the top layer, uh, top soil, right, and it absorb the water and the minerals altogether. So that's all about the different types of roots that we have. Charlie, everyone. See, I can see some of the questions which are being asked here. I will leave them. Uh, we will discuss it, everyone. Yes, we will discuss it. Okay, Charlie. Now let's talk about the leaf. Now let's talk about the leaf, right? Yes. Okay. So here we have. Um, Leaf, what we have, of course, we have different types of venation altogether. We have reticulate venation, where, of course, we'll see the network of veins, and then we have parallel venation that we see in banana, right, where the uh, veins are running parallelly to each other on both the sides. So, leaves plays a very important role. They are the ones that actually help in the process of photosynthesis. We have a lamina, the leaf blade, then we have a midrib, the main rib, right, then we have small veins, and we have the petiole, the leaf stalk, which is attached. Now, this is very important, everyone, that leaves plays a very important role in the process of photosynthesis, right? Photosynthesis is a very important process where the plants make their own food by utilizing the carbon dioxide, water. In the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, they'll make the oxygen and release the glucose. They basically make glucose and release the oxygen. Along with that, transpiration is also important. That happens to the leaves. Now, what is transpiration? Transpiration is nothing but the loss of water. In a form of water, vapors from the leaves, right over here. So that's how we know that plant cool down themselves. And that's how they usually pull the water from the roots to the top. Everyone, are we clear? Are we clear uh, up to here? Okay, I'll answer that question. Give me a minute. Yes, we can say. See, tika, if you see the plant, right, it has a woody stem. So yeah, shrub. Manat, I've answered your question. Okay, please wait for some time and answer. I'll take that question. Ashwita, you need to find that. Ma'am, what type of plant is banana? It's a plant. You tell me. We have discussed the important features all together. Is it a herb? Is it a shrub? Or is it a tree? Yes. My channel, those are the plant which are annual. But throughout the year, they will be, uh, you know, they will be, uh, they have the leaves or, or they'll be reproducing only in a certain period of time. Yes? Everyone take a screenshot. <coughs> Chalye. Okay, now, now let's talk about the flower everyone, right? Now let's talk about the flower. Now flower has very important different types of uh, whorls, right? We say or essential components, right? This particular part is called as petal. The bright color part, right, that they have, we call it as a petal. Then this part over here is a sepal. We have uh, stamen, right? And we have the pistil. So let's take a look everyone at this particular part. So here we have the parts everyone. Now sepal are the small leaf like green color leaf like bud like structure that actually protect 
the growth of the bird in the beginning right it is covered like this i'm sure you would have seen a rose covered bird it has a covering right then we have petals petals are very bright in color they are there so that they can in, uh, attract the insect for the process of pollination then we have stamen which is nothing but the male reproductive part which has two important components anther and the filament anther produces a pollen grain right and filament of course is attached to the anther then of course we have the pistil which is also called as a female reproductive system we have stamina or uh, sorry uh, stigma we have stigma style ovary and the ovule inside the ovary we will have the ovule right very good very good gynoecium and an androecium androecium is a male part and gynoecium is a female part yes okay so remember this everyone that pollination will happen when the pollen grains from the anther will come and get attached on the stigma right clear and then we'll see the formation of the pollen tube yes easy peasy so you will be learning more in your higher classes but as of now this information is good enough for us for our, our examination after the fertilization right after the pollination process we will see the formation of the seed we have two types of seed we can have a monocot seeds and the dicot seeds we have two cotyledons and if they if we have two half of a seed we call it as a dicots rajma chav uh, chole all of those are dicot because you can actually break that particular seed into two halves whereas maize wheat are all monocots will not be able to break them into the two halves clear everyone yes manat ovules are present inside the ovaries and they are the one that will be converting into the seeds okay yes very good manat have i ex explained your question yes yeah kidney bean shape yes absolutely correct so with this everyone we are kind of done with our chapter of getting to no plants we have discussed about the herbs shrubs trees climbers and the creepers and of course we have gone into detail and understood about the different parts of the plant also yes everyone take a screenshot of it it will be easy for you to revise yes everyone very good very good okay chali good now everyone let's take a look at the questions the presence of a thick and hard stem is a feature of the presence of a thick and a hard stem is a feature of monocot seed bache monocot seeds are found in the monocot plants right after the fertilization we'll see the monocot seeds we will not be able to divide them into two halves and they have one cotyledon you will be learning more about the maize wheat is the example Very good, everyone. The option number D is the correct answer. Option number D is the correct answer, everyone. Tree is the correct answer. That the presence of a thick, very thick, right, and a hard stem is a feature of a tree and not a feature of herbs, shrubs, and the climbers. Very good. Now there are two questions that you all are asking. I would say that you can find the answer and tell me. Right. So uh, I'll answer that question, but give me a minute. Which of the following leaves have reticulate venation? Reticulate venation, everyone. We have it in the tap root plants, right? The plant will have a tap root system also. Which of these plants, right? Which of the following leaves will have a reticulate venation? Wheat, tulsi, maize, or grass? Yes, very good. In tulsi, we will see the reticulate venation. what is a reticulate venation the leaves will have veins running into different different direction like a network right that is reticulate venation in parallel venation we know that right on both the sides the venation right over here it will be parallel clear okay yes very good everyone option b is the correct answer moving to the next question which of the following has tap root easy peasy question everyone which which of the following have a tap root yes ma'am part is ovary ovule is a part of ovary yes very good very good 
नीरज वी यूजली कॉल बनाना एज अ टॉलेस्ट हर्ब राइट अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट वी हैव इन बायोलॉजी दो पीपल विल लिटिल बिट आर्ग्यू ऑन द श्रब्स ऑल्सो बट इट डज नॉट हैव अ वुडी स्टेम राइट इट हैज अ वेरी सॉफ्ट स्टेम ग्रीन स्टेम hence we call it as a tallest herb for tulsi everyone you find out and tell me whether it's a herb or it's a shrub i'm sure you would have seen tulsi ka plant right and i'm sure you would have seen a little bit of woodiness that we have in the stem giving you a hint i'm sure you'll be able to find the answer for that very good everyone the correct answer for here is option b mango which is the following has a tap root system mango wheat maize and banana will have fibrous root system very good very good Yes, yes. Lily does has sepals. चलिए, so everyone are we clear? Herbs, shloka, the small plant which does not have very you know woody stem. Yes, Avinash, they do have. Yes, Neeraj. चलिए, so everyone are you clear with the two chapters? Give me a quick thumbs up. Half an hour there, everyone. We have half an hour more. We will be able to finish off two chapters, right? Very good, very good. Yes, Sam. Gla grass also has parallel venation. Very good, Bannat. <laughs> Chali. Okay, everyone. Let's move to the next chapter. But before that, just reminding you about the crash course, for especially for class eighth. If you're here in class eighth, try to purchase this course, everyone. For where we'll be studying for one week. we focusing on the new syllabus important questions right and it's a very amazing course that we will have and of course we have a close telegram group community where we you will be interacting with the teachers we'll be able to track down your growth it's a very interesting thing so do try it out but ha maize to seed hai umesh sabhi seeds hai right wheat is also a seed chaliye okay you are now moving to the next chapter which is body movement Now it's a very very interesting chapter, everyone. I hope that all of you are there with me. Give me a quick thumbs up. I need high energy in the class. Hello, Chirag. Ha! Is the cover of ovule will not? We can say that ovules are present inside the ovary. Will not call it as a cover cover per se. Chali, everyone. Very good. I hope that all of you have hit the like button for the video. Everyone, quickly hit the like button. So many of you are here. So many of you are here. Everyone, hit the like button. Jaldi se. Yes. Hit the like button. I want to see the likes increasing. How many likes we have? You tell me the count. Yes. Very good. Very good. You like the. You hit the like button for the video. Very good, everyone. I can see. See, ऐसा ही होता है. जब तक मैम बोलेंगी नहीं, likes बढ़ते ही नहीं हैं. चलिए. Now, everyone, let's start with a very interesting chapter of body movement. All of you are ready, right? It's a very, very fun chapter. It's a super fun chapter. Okay, चलिए. So let's talk about the body movements. Now, in this particular chapter, we'll be focusing on the movement. that happens in the bodies of the humans plants and different other animals we will be understanding what is a skeletal framework that we have right we will be starting from the foundation we'll be discussing all the different types of bones names also so let's get started everyone when we talk about the body movement it is nothing but the change in the position of the body part with respect to the whole body of an organism for example here this is a movement right all of you this is a movement i am moving my hand from here to here that this is a movement now we can see that we have a change of the position of a body part with respect to the body yes my body is not moving but a part is moving that is the body movements now in body movements we will be discussing about the in humans in plants and of course in the other animals starting uh, with the humans we will be focusing on the bones joints muscles and the cartilage Let's go into the details, everyone. Let's go into the details. Now, when we talk about the bones, right? What are bones? Bones are very, very important part of our body, right? 
they are the one that provide us a skeletal framework for the body right provide a frame and shape the human body by forming the skeleton so of course we have different bones that comes together and join they form the skeleton right and on this skeleton we have the you know uh, muscles and that's how we'll see the movement happening so it provides a frame and shape to the human body by framing by forming the skeleton now if you take a look over here right we have different types of bones all together in the human body and over here if you take a look everyone you can take a screenshot of this yes devashish i'll explain you what is the difference between the locomotion and movement give me a minute take a screenshot every one of this ha huh. movement we are clear right it's a change in the position of a body movement locomotion is a change of place for example i'm standing over here if i move here if i'm moving out of the screen locomotion have happened locomotion is nothing but the change in the place everyone are we clear right are we clear what is locomotion if there is a change of the place that is locomotion if, for example if you and me are moving i am coming from here from the back right see i am over here and i am coming here i have traveled a distance right my my position have changed from here to here that is locomotion clear chal now let's talk about the human skeletal system everyone now we know that we have the skeletal system right we have different types of bones it comes together right and of course they give us a very strong structure yes now uh, we are starting with the skull now of course we have a skull yes we have our skull over here yes now inside that what we have we have the brain it protects the brain so skull is a bony covering right we also call it as a cranium inside that what we have we have our brain which is very very important and very uh, you know we should be protecting it properly so of course we have a very strong skull then we have a rib cage rib cage provides the protection to the heart and the lungs inside this of course we have our lungs and over here we have our heart okay we have pelvis the lower part of the body it actually help in providing protection to the kidneys we have vertebrae column provides the support and of course protect the spinal cord right protect the spinal cord also so let's take a look at the different types of bones we have right bones may everyone here we have we have skull we have rib cage vertebral column and the pelvis so now we are taking a look at the bones skull is the first part everyone we discussed it protect the brain then we have mandible right this part is a mandible okay this part then we have vertebral column right we have uh, cervical vertebrae which is present in the neck region right that that allow the movement of our neck then we have thoracic vertebrae the backbone right yes that actually help in protecting the spinal cord and various movement see you and i can stand because of the vertebral column right then of course we have lumbar vertebrae the lower part the the lower part of the vertebrae vertebrae right so we have three different types of vertebrae we have divided we have cervical vertebrae thoracic and the lumbar clear everyone then if you take a look we have the clavicle the the collar bone everyone this this bone we can actually easily touch at the neck right at your neck you will be able to see two bones going from at from from the center to the shoulder touch those that bone right you can touch that part right yes that is a clavicle or the collar bone clear yeah? then we have the scapula over here which is which which actually attach right then we have sternum which is present between the rib cage over here basically the rib cage is joined if at uh, the sternum over here yes sternum is not the backbone bachche it's not the backbone it's not a backbone okay then we of course we have the rib cage then we have humerus the the arm this uh bone then we have radius and we have ulna and of course if you take a look at uh, the fingers right we have carpals metacarpals and phalanges so we have carpals over here then we have metacarpals right uh then of course we have the phalanges done very good now if you take a look at the lower part of the body we will have the pelvis right this pelvis which supports gives us a structure 
right? Then we have the sacrum over here, the last part. Then, of course, it's a kind of a, uh, you know, tail initially that we used to have, collect. Then we have femur, the largest bone in the human body is a femur, right? Yes. Then we have patella, patella, basically the kneecap. Yes. Then we have tibia, we have fibula, two bones. And then, of course, we have the uh, calcaceous, right? Then we have tarsals, metatarsals and the phalanges. Now, this is in detail. But you don't have to get scared of all of this. It's in detail. See, you just have to look at the important points which are there in your textbook. Yes? Clear, everyone? If you want to take a screenshot of this, everyone take a screenshot. Jaldi say. Very good. Yes, tell you. It's a lower jaw. This part. This part. Man, it's a lower jaw. Yes, Charlie. Okay. So now we're done with the bones, right? And now we'll be taking a look at the different types of joints. And you all were asking about the joints. So here we have everyone. A uh, hinge joint is a joint that actually move in only one particular direction. Back and forth. Back and forth. Hinge. We have door me. Right? In the in door, we what we have? We have the hinge. Clear? So we have the hinge joint where we'll be able to see the movement back and forth. Then we have pivotal joint. Now, of course, we have it in our neck region. We have a restriction movement, right? We can rotate like this. We can easily rotate our neck. Yes. Can go side and side and up and down. It cannot turn 360 degrees. It's not that it's just done completely. Pura se ghoom nahi sakta hai, right? Clear? But that's the pivotal joint. Then, of course, we have ball and socket joint which are present in the shoulder and, of course, in the, uh, you know, in the knee. Yes? Very good. Very good. So, what we have, we have ball and socket joint. Now, this particular ball and socket joint gives us a movement in all the direction. In all the direction, everyone, we can move it. Yes? So, that is a ball and socket joint. And last, we have the saddle joint which gives a movement of like this. Easy peasy movement that we have up. Back and forth, up and down like this. That we have is a saddle joint and we have it in our wrist. I'm not sure, Neeraj, is it the information that you're sharing with me or you're asking? Akshita, that's the last part, sometime, uh, you know, last part in, the, in our vertebrae column. Krish, you need to find that answer. There are different parts, various patches we have. Very good. Anurit, very good. 50 out of 50, congratulations. Shall you? Okay, very good, very good. It's not easy, it's not. It's easy peasy. Yes, Sharanya, absolutely correct. Chali. Now moving to the muscle contraction, everyone. Muscle contraction, we see the contraction, the relaxation. So what happens in our muscles? We contract. And that's the reason it, we will see the movement happening. Right? Contraction happening. So we know that the front muscles contract and the back muscles re relaxes, causing the bending of the movement of our arm. See over here, these muscles are contracting, these muscles are relaxing and hence we'll be able to move our arm. Clear? And uh, front muscle relax, back muscle contract and hence it will be moving back to its position. So we know that in the muscles, two important things that we have to remember, that is the contraction and the relaxation. Okay? Contraction, the relaxation of the muscles is very, very important. Now, then the last topic that, I, uh, that we have over here is the cartilage. Now, what is the cartilage, everyone? It's a very soft part, right? It's not a very hard part, right? But it's a very important part that can easily bend. We have it in the upper part of the ear, nose, you know, end of the long bones. It provides a cushioning effect also. And of course, it's very, very crucial for our body. So, cartilage will remember everyone. So, in the humans, what are the things we have studied? We have discussed about the bones, joints, muscles and the cartilage. Okay? Yes. Creative. Creative. You are asking about where the pivotal joint is present in the neck. Yes, Neeraj. In the ear. We have the smallest bone in our ear. Yes. Okay. Charlie, everyone. 
moving to the movement in the plants now of course in the movement of the plants if we see they don't they don't move from one place to another right they have the blooming of the flowers sudden drooping of the leaves these are the two movements that we have in our plants easy peasy now let's talk about the movement in the animals everyone and this is important few of you said that ma'am we have issues in understanding the gait in the other organisms so let's see we are starting with the fish everyone right fish has a very interesting streamlined body and this streamlined body actually help the fishes to swim they have fins they have tails right and they have a streamlined body so of course i'm sure you would have seen the fishes moving like this they have a streamlined body they have uh, fins right of course tail will be helping in the moving in whatever direction they have to right so that's how the fishes move then we have the birds birds fly right they have a hollow bone inside and they have feathers so that they can fly and uh, they also have a streamlined body then we are talking about cockroach i saw that someone is like ma'am i we don't like cockroach that much here we have cockroach has both wings and legs so it can fly and can walk also right and of course it has three different pairs of legs so we have one two three over here right very interesting legs yes i'm very very interesting organism all together so it can fly also it can walk also then we have earthworm now earthworm is a very muscular structure right so of course it crawls with the help of the muscles and small small bristles that are present aise aise karke caterpillar i'm sure you would have seen right that that's how it moves then we have the snail snail also creep with the help of a strong muscular locomotory foot over here they are the one that just glide themselves yes last but not the least everyone we have snake which slither slithers with the help of a flexible long backbone and interconnected muscles easy peasy everyone take a screenshot of it everyone are you tendon joint uh, the um, muscle to bone it's a type right are you should ask him about the tendon tendon actually help in the connection of bone to bone sorry muscle to bone bone to bone is ligament chaliye streamline means streamline means this this shape have you seen the shape of a plane this shape is a streamline shape chaliye moving to the question round everyone here we go to the question the bones in a body also form a framework to give a shape to a body the framework is called as what sanvi bachche that's uh, sanvi that's a lower part of the vertebral column bachche akshita it has basically a muscular structure that actually help in the movement very good very good everyone i can see all of you are voting with the correct answer that is the skeleton very good so the bone in the body also from uh, form this uh, framework to to give shape to our body question number 2 everyone on the screen the rounded end of one bone fits into the cavity hollow space of the another bone such a joint allows movement in all the direction such a joint is also called as what yes we can rotate our knees right we can do a little bit of rotation like this we can make a circle very good the correct answer over here is the ball and socket joint last question everyone from this particular chapter here we go the streamlined body is found in snail earthworm fish or jellyfish the streamlined body right is found in snail earthworm fish jellyfish very good the correct answer over here is option number c that is the fish so in the fish we will we will see the streamlined body very good everyone so with this we are done with the body movement locomotion uh, attitude boy is nothing but a change in the position right of the uh, organism is the locomotion so everyone we are done with the three chapters we started with the components of food getting to know plants body movements and now we are in the last chapter last chapter everyone that is a living organism their characteristic features and their habitat so let's talk about it now in this we'll be focusing on the characteristic features first now in that of course we have different types of uh, you know systems that we'll remember all together so of course if we look over here we have different level of organization some are made up of cells 
uh, response to the environment, growth and of love, obtain use and energy and reproduce. So if I ask you, right, if I ask you, what are the characteristic features of a living organism? You will say, ma'am, they need food, they need to respire, they need to move, they need to excrete, right? All of these things makes us the living organism. See, I cannot say that this particular bottle of the sanitizer, right, will be able to digest the food. Do you think that this particular plastic bottle will be able to digest the food? Tell me. The answer will be no, right? It's not the living organism. In the living organism, if we consume the food, we'll be able to digest the food. We have respiration happening, we reproduce, we respond to our environment, right? So these are the important characteristic features that make you and me a living character, right? We have living things and we have non-living things. Living things, of course, we all know the all the plants and the animals and the microorganisms will fall under the category of living. And then, of course, we have non-living. Now, non-living, we have table, chair, air, soil, water, etc. Now, these living and non-living things interact with each other. Right? In our environment, they interact with each other. So, that's important thing about the characteristic features. Everyone, are we clear? Yes, are we clear? Unicellular example means one single cell. Amoeba is example, bache. Amoeba is example of one single cell organism. Chalye. Habitat, everyone. Right? A different surrounding of an area have a different organism that live in them. So, if someone will ask you, what is a habitat? What is a habitat? It's a surrounding on an area where you will be able to find the organism. That are there originally living. Yes, where they are originally living. Everyone, are we clear? What is a habitat? A different surrounding or an area have a different organisms that they are living into that. And that is the habitat. So, for example, if I have to ask you that, what is the habitat place of penguins? Or what is the habitat place of uh, Asiatic lions? Right, we'll say, Achha, Asiatic lions so we have in our country only. Yes, in Gir National Park. So, the habitat, the place where we can find them is that. Stimuli is something, bache, the external agent that we, that we will respond to. For example, light is external stimuli. Very good, everyone. Creative activities have answered your question. Okay. Now everyone, let's talk about the biotic and the abiotic components. I've just spoken about a few minutes back about the biotic components and the abiotic components. Now, biotic components are the living components include plants, animals, microorgan or microorganisms. And then of course, in the abiotic factor, we have air, water and sunlight. Now, these two interact with each other. We know that plants need sunlight. Plants need water. Plants need air. So does all of the animals also. So we have a great connection between the abiotic and the biotic factors in the environment. Now, based upon that, we can say that we have different types of habitat where, of course, all of them are interacting. Right? So we have terrestrial ecosystem. Right? Now we have terrestrial ecosystem, we have water ecosystem. So if you look over here in terrestrial, the land area, right, is not same throughout our planet. We have different, different types of terrestrial uh, systems altogether, right? We have different types of habitat. We have different types of habitat. So of course, we have desert where we'll see sand, there will be no less number of plants, right? Water is also very less. Then we have forests and grasslands where we have huge thick forest, lots of animals we can found and it has a good amount of rainfall also. In desert, we don't have a rainfall. Good amount of rainfall is not there. Then we have mountains, right? And of course, we have the polar region. So all of these are the terrestrial habitat where the animals can, where the animals and plants are staying. If you take a look at the detailed study of one of the animals that you have in your textbook, is that of the camel. Now camel is a desert animal, right? Loves, uh, we always call that, you know, uh, camel is a, can you tell me, ship of the desert, right? We also call it the ship of the desert because it just, it just easily can survive in the harsh climatic condition. So, we have the adaptation that we have in the animals which are there in the desert. So, let's talk about them everyone. First, that they start producing thick urine. What are they doing, doing in urine usually? What happens? We have more amount of the water. But these organisms will be producing thick urine so that they can reduce the 
loss of water right then we have sweat free less right uh, so, sorry sweat very less so they don't sweat also so if a animal is not sweating right they are conserving the water they are not releasing the water then they have long they have a low breathing rate to minimize the water loss of course they have a low breathing rate we have snakes, we have mouse, we have lizards, we have cactus over there, right? So, cactus does not have the leaves, they have the stem which plays an important role in the process of photosynthesis. So, the plants and the animals have adapted themselves to stay in the harsh conditions. In camel, what we have, we have a hump to store the food, uh, sorry, to store the fat. We have closed nostrils so that the it cannot, uh, it just prevent the entry of the sand, then of course it has long eyelashes so that the wind cannot get inside, the sand cannot get inside the eye, right? This is very important. Then of course they have long leg, high, keep the body high above the sand and they have the feet are very soft, right? So that they can walk easily on the sand. So everyone take a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot of this everyone, it's important. Phoenix, the difference between forest and a grassland, my child, grassland we will have a huge ground full of grass. Very less trees there. Grass will be more. Right? Forest, of course, we have trees. Okay? Manish, uh, those of you are asking about the difference between the forest and the uh, grasslands, I have answered that question. Chali. Now, let's talk about the plants. We were talking about it, right? So, plants actually minimize the loss of water. So, what we have? They have a thick stem. They have a waxy coating on them. So that they can reduce the loss of water by the process of transpiration, right? Then, of course, they have green stem. They don't have leaves. They have green stem so that they can perform photosynthesis. And leaves are actually modified to spines so that they can reduce the transpiration process. That is nothing but the loss of water in a form of water vapor. Most important, they have very deep roots, right? So that they can go to a long distance to get the water. Clear, everyone? Take a screenshot of this also. Ayush, aerial habitat is a air wala where the birds fly. Okay. Done. Very good. Yes, very good, very good, everyone. Now we have the forest and the grasslands. The forest and the grasslands are what we have. We usually receive a good amount of rainfall, then the deserts for sure. We have various different types of animals. In the forest and grasslands, we will have a variety of the animals. See, we have lion, deer, tiger, cheetah, etc, etc. What are the different characteristic features, everyone? Right? Now, the animals who are living in the forest or in the grasslands, right, they have to hunt. So, they have very sharp teeth, right, so that they can tear the flesh of the other animal. They have sharp claw, very strong in attack, right? Like deer, what they have, they are, the, they are the prey and lion is a predator. So deer has to run. So they have a strong leg so that they can run fast, right? They have flat teeth so that they can chew the hard plants easily. Along with that, they have a eyes to look on the both the side. They can actually look in all the direction. And they have long ears so that they can hear the sound from the distance. So nature have made the animals and the adaptation in such a way that they can survive, right? So, we have these two examples over here. Now, we are moving to the polar region, everyone. To moving to the polar region. So, we have North Pole and we have South Pole. North Pole, we have our polar bear. South Pole, may what we have? We have our penguins. So, the adaptation of these animals are very, very interesting. Right? We have thick, they have a thick layer of fat and fur, right? So, that they can keep themselves super warm. Uh, white appearance actually help in camouflaging with the surroundings so that they can attack their prey. Some of you are asking, what is prey? Prey is nothing. Prey and predator and prey. In a case of predator, we are talking about the animal which will be eating the other animal. That is lion is a predator. Prey, which will be getting eaten up like deer. Okay? Chalye. Then of course, they have a very large feet so that they can increase the grip on the ice altogether. Then, we have discussed about the uh, terrestrial habitat. Now let's talk about the aquatic habitat, right? In the water, what we have? We have marine and we have fresh water. Marine are the salt water, right? When we talk about, they have huge water bodies which have lots of salt into it. We have oceans and we have the seas all together. Yes? Chalye. Now, in them, of course, we have various different uh, animals, but of course, they also have the adaptation. 
yes so let's take a look everyone we have um, fishes over there which have a streamlined body they have fins they have tails and they have gills so that they can respire then if you talk about the whales right over here they have a streamlined body and they have a blow holes i'm sure you would have seen whale coming on the surface and releasing the water right then uh, we have the kelps right this is, these are the plants they can survive they can thrive in the cold water and the strong waves and water turbulence bring the nutrient for its survival right over here kelps then last may we have octopus it can easily camouflage it does not have any bone and it can easily mimic the surrounding i'm sure you would have seen various videos where the octopus is kind of you know camouflaging with the sand yes very good ma'am they'll be asking ha they can ask uh, the uh, habitat wala question can come for 3 marks 5 marks also okay chaliye ma'am is north pole in north pole what types of prey can be there we have seals right um, sometime we have those small small um, relatives of rabbits also who are there right then we have different types of fishes okay chaliye moving ahead everyone to the fresh water fishes fresh water habitat right so of course they also have a separate different adaptation fish will have a streamlined body they will have gills they will have fins and the tails water lily is a very important plant right they have a very uh, their roots are actually fixed in the soil and of course they have a very hollow stem right and leaves and the flowers float on the surface i'm sure you would have seen lotus plant uh, water lily plant they actually float on the water surface yes over here then of course we have a plant which is the velociria they have a very thin shaped ribbon like leaves right and of course they have a small roots for the anchorage also yes so that's all about the fresh water plants now this is a, a little bit in detail everyone you you don't have this much in your um, you don't have this much in your uh, you know textbook yes but uh, it's okay it's good to understand it you can skip the part which you don't have in your textbook so with this everyone we are done let's take a look at the questions yes here we go which of the following cannot be called as a habitat which of the following we cannot call it as a habitat a deer a desert with a camel a pond with fish a jungle with wild animal a cultivated land with a grazing cattle yes Very good, everyone. I can see the correct answer. All of you have voted the correct answer. The correct answer is option number D. Cultivated land with a grazing cattle, right? It's not a habitat, right? Of course, we don't. It's not a natural habitat, right? Cultivated land with a grazing cattle, it's not. Okay, moving to the next question. Sunlight, water, and air are what? Habitat, biotic components, abiotic components, or adaptation? Easy peasy. Very very easy peasy. Yes everyone please make sure you hit the like button for the video Yes very good very good The correct answer over here is it's a abiotic factor it's a non living factor abiotic factor Last question everyone in the sea water uh, sorry in the sea plants and sea animals are surrounded by fresh water saline water hot water or cold water easy question in the sea plants and animals are surrounded by which kind of water fresh water saline water hot water or cold water good everyone the correct answer over here is option number b saline water that is the reason it's called sea right it has saline water interesting so with this everyone we are done with our four chapters of biology first of course we started with the components of food getting to know plants body movements living organism their characteristic features and the habitat right so all of this is very important i hope that you are understanding every one of this particular chapter don't worry in the upcoming weeks we will be conducting mentees we will have more of practice sessions right but as of now you need to understand that we are very few teachers over here we are we're just trying to make sure that we give you the quality education okay so please do cooperate everyone and everything we have we uh, in the last year also we did us so many uh, different type of sessions if you want to watch it you can definitely watch on the channel chaliye So with this, everyone, I am ending the class. I hope that all of you have enjoyed the class. A quick reminder for all of you to register for the crash course if you are in class eight, right? You will be getting a chance to meet, not physically meet your teacher, but to interact with your teacher in a close classroom setup 
we will be making sure that you're excelling in your examination. We'll be focusing on the important questions, right? We'll have a close community where we'll be interacting also, right? So everyone, please do try it out. The link is in the description, in the description box. Chalye. Moving ahead, everyone. We are done. Done, 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 everyone. So with that, I'll end the class, everyone. Thank you for coming to the class. Please make sure you stay with us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with your friends so that they can also learn about biology in a very super easy way. And please make sure you hit the like button for the video. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes. Yes, everyone. So good to see that. Bye-bye, everyone. Do take care of yourself. If you have any doubts, write in the comment section below. Lots of love, everyone. And write in the... You write in the comment section about the session. I'm, I hope that, tell me the confidence level that you have after the session. Out of five star, how many stars you will give to yourself? Right? Write in the comment section and tell me. And tell me whether the Tulsi is a herb or a shrub. Two things you need to write in the comment section. Chali. Bye bye everyone. We'll be meeting really very soon. Till that time, do take care of yourself and keep on learning with Baijus. Bye bye.